welcome back. Uh, we will now uh, talk about something which uh, is possibly the subject is about 30 years old. This is um, actually this whole area is what is under the domain of called synthetic biology. Now, you know synthetic chemistry like synthetic organic chemistry is basically making of new entities, new molecules that is all about synthetic chemistry either you make a natural you, uh, new molecules or it could be some natural product which is existing in the plant or uh, other microorganisms. So, that is synthetic chemistry. So, synthetic like our synthetic textile and then you have the natural textile which is cotton. Synthetic textiles are polymer based. Okay. Similarly, a question was raised that can we have typical biological uh, entities, can we make them synthetically or artificially what you can say in the lab to do reactions or to do functions which proteins are doing uh, or other biomolecules are doing. So, is it possible to design our own catalytic system which are like enzymes. So, that was the one domain of synthetic biology that you are trying to make which are called synthetic enzymes in order to catalyze a particular reaction. Remember nature has given us these enzymes, these proteins which act as enzymes. How many number of enzymes are there? It could be a huge number that is true. What type of reactions they catalyze? That also depends on the nature of the enzyme, but I have given you six classes of enzymes oxidoreductase, transferase, hydrolase, lyase, then, uh, then isomerase and finally, ligase. Okay, that is the sixth one. Now, when you isolate enzymes from natural sources, that is what are enzymes. Enzymes cannot be isolated from unnatural sources. So, natural sources you isolate an enzyme. Now, this enzyme is actually tailor made by nature to catalyze a particular reaction. Okay. Now, organic chemists were all the time looking for catalysis for catalysis of their reactions that they are doing. Okay. Now, number of organic reactions are huge, different type of reactions, different type of reactions, but the number of biochemical reactions may be, uh, may be restricted. Actually, it is restricted because it depends on the number of enzymes that are available. In organic chemistry, I give you an example. In organic chemistry, there are some reactions, say this you talk about a reaction which is very famous in organic chemistry calls the Dills called the Dills Alder reaction. Eh? Dills Alder reaction. So, what is made here that you have you make a cyclic compound the double bonds rearrange and you get this. This is also called a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Okay, now, if I want to have a catalyst, see this dissolved reaction in order to take place, you have to take these two systems, one is butadiene, another is ethylene. You have to take in a flask, add a solvent and then heat it. Unless you heat it, this reaction will not go. However, there are some dissolved reaction which are uh, which needs lower temperature, but a majority of them needs refluxing in a solvent high temperature is needed. Okay. You know enzyme reactions uh, in enzyme reactions are happening at what temperature at the biological temperature what is the biological temperature. So, if I think of a biological temperature in the in a human system it is about 37 degree centigrade. So, in our body about 37 degree centigrade reactions are happening. Now, for enzymes heating the heating has a negative uh, a negative effect on the activity of the enzyme. 
if you hit the enzyme what happens the enzymes are actually folded in a three dimensional network that we showed that is called the tertiary structure. So, as you hit the enzyme the conformation that is required to catalyze the reaction that changes and if that changes the enzyme will ultimately lose the activity. So, if you so people started thinking that because enzymes uh, can catalyze reactions at room temperature or the biological temperature. So, but is basically 30 to 37 degrees centigrade. Um, so, can we have now can we design an enzyme for diels solder reaction if we can design an enzyme and then synthesize that then we will have this reaction which will be catalyzed by the enzyme. So, what about unless see why synthetic biology is required because the question is whether there is any enzyme which does this diels solder reaction or not. Today there are a few enzymes available to carry out the diels solder reaction, but uh, maybe 20 years back people thought that these pericyclic reactions will not be catalyzed by enzymes. So, they were after uh, this type of making biological systems taking the help of biology I will show you how you can make those synthetic or artificial enzymes uh, enzyme like molecules you cannot call them enzymes because the enzymes are natural. So, they are enzyme like molecules and uh, how to then make those uh, artificial things to catalyze certain reactions. Okay. So, basically what we are trying to say here is that take a general case I want to have a reaction where there is a substrate A, I want to convert it into the product B. First, I will search whether there is any enzyme which does this reaction. Suppose there is no enzyme available to do this reaction. Actually, many of the organic reactions are not catalyzed by enzymes that we normally do in the laboratory. On the other hand, there are again different types of enzymes are used in synthetic organic chemistry to carry out certain transformations. Now, suppose this A to B conversion there is no enzyme available. If enzyme is available then people will, will not go after uh, go after making new enzymes to catalyze this reaction because always think that enzymes have been designed and ultimately made through evolution which have nature had this time to make the enzymes perfect. Uh, enzymes perfect for certain reactions or selective for certain reactions over millions and millions of years. Okay. So, after several if, if you think that uh, nature is a craftsman or craftswoman then you have this. Uh, so, he, he or she tried all these things and ultimately came out with the best best possible protein which can act as the enzyme. Okay. So, again making same type of enzyme it will be very difficult to compete with the natural system. So, usually the synthetic biology people they look for reactions where no enzyme is known. So, this A to B suppose there is no enzyme that is known, but I want a catalyst enzyme like catalyst okay. not the there are different catalysts in organic chemistry that are used like transitional metal based catalyst, uh, Wilkinson's catalyst, uh, Rani nickel, palladium on uh, charcoal all these are all these are catalysts some are homogeneous some are heterogeneous. Okay. But we are not talking about those type of catalysts we are talking about a, a catalyst which works like whose mechanism of reaction is very similar to the enzyme. Okay. So, that was the desire of organic chemists if that becomes successful if the strategy becomes successful that you can catalyze uh, the reaction of A to B then by following the same strategy you can catalyze a reaction from C to D. So, any reaction virtually if you of course, that if is there if you can design an enzyme like catalyst then virtually any reaction what are there in organic chemistry you can have a catalyst. Okay. So, that is the whole scenario although we are far from that yet to have catalyst for each reaction, 
uh, that is still there are some difficulties I will tell you what are the difficulties, but this is the idea to have a catalyst to catalyze a reaction where there is no enzyme is possible. Okay. And if your strategy is correct, if your principle is correct, then in theory you can catalyze any reaction, any reaction. Of course, there is one question that is that will be asked that you have to know what is the mechanism of that organic reaction. Unless you know the mechanism, you will not be able to design an artificial catalyst, enzyme like catalyst. Why the mechanism is required? Because if you know the mechanism, then only you know what is the transition state, what is the transition state for the reaction. In order to know the transition state, you will need to know the mechanism of the reaction. Right? Suppose there are reactions S n 2 and S n 1 reactions and the transition state for both the reactions are different. Okay. So, unless you know the mechanism, you will not know the transition state. So, that is important, the mechanism has to be established. Okay. Today, with the advancement of spectroscopy uh, techniques, the, many of the, the mechanisms of organic reactions have been unraveled. Okay. So, mechanism is not a much of a bigger problem these days. So, we know the mechanism. So, if we know the mechanism, we know the transition state, we can roughly draw the transition state because transition state also very difficult to pinpoint what is the structure of the transition state. Remember what is the transition state where bond formation and bond breakage they are halfway through, they are not complete. Okay. Now, some halfway through means some may be three fourths through that means the bond breakage is more suppose and bond formation is less. So, it is really very difficult to know the actual structure of the transition state, but what one can do that uh, you take the if there is an intermediate involved in the reaction. I told you last time that according to Hammond's postulate, transition state structure resembles most the intermediate for that reaction, and that is simply because the energy profile diagram is something like this. So, this is your intermediate and this is your transition state. Now, there are two transition state for this reaction. However, always we look for the slowest step of the reaction which determines the rate of a reaction. So, this has got an activation energy which is much higher than the activation energy for the second step okay. and this is the intermediate. Now, that means we will be interested to know what is the structure of this transition state and this is closest in energy not with the substrate not with the product, but with the intermediate. So, if you know the some intermediates can be isolated their existence can be proven the structure uh, can be predicted that this is the structure of the intermediate. So, if you know the structure of the intermediate you can approximate it that this will be the very similar the transition state will be very similar to the structure of the intermediate okay, that is known. Now, how to develop an enzyme like catalyst. The principle is very simple that you know that enzyme catalysis is enzyme catalysis uh, uh, in the enzyme catalysis substrate binds to the en enzyme then it goes to the transition state the transition state is also bound to the enzyme and then it goes to the product. The product was initially bound to the enzyme then it is released. Now, out of these three species I told you in the very first day of enzyme catalysis that which one has the highest affinity for the enzyme. That means, the enzyme offers stability to either the substrate to the transition state as well as to the product, but it offers least stability to the product because product has to be released very quickly. So, that new enzyme molecules are made. So, then out of this transition state is the one which is stabilized most okay, because that will lower the activation energy. So, out of these three species transition state will be the will be low, will be the highest uh, uh, will be the most stabilized by the enzyme. That means, the enzyme active site you can always start uh, elaborating it the transition state has a structure 
which is geometrically and electronically complementary to the structure of the active site in the enzyme. Okay. So, transition state. So, what you need is basically E to B again the reaction you have a transition state. So, what you need is that you should make a, a protein like molecule and that should have uh, that should have some site which is electronically and geometrically complementary to the transition state. So, suppose this is the active site of the transition state the substrate goes and binds then it becomes the transition state okay. and it is stabilized by different types of weak interactions. Okay. Now, the question is how to create. So, the problem boils down to creation of the active site in the enzyme. Okay. Now, what is the technique that is uh, that is uh, people have adopted is that we know that if a foreign particle enters into our body foreign particle or foreign organism enters into our body something is is generated in the body fluid in the blood stream eh? and that is what are called antibodies. So, when some molecule comes and invades and it is in the blood uh, circulation then what happens some again some molecules are made by our body system it immediately recognizes that something foreign has entered in my in my body. So, there is something what is called immune response. So, our immune response then immediately makes takes some time and then it makes the what are called antibodies. What are these antibodies? The antibodies are the one which recognizes the invading molecule, okay, which recognizes the invading molecule. That means the trans that antibody has a structure which is complementary to the to the invading molecule structure okay otherwise how it recognizes the uh, the invading molecule so basically if the invading molecule suppose looks like this then the this is the this is uh, remember this is called the antigen the invading foreign molecule. Now, if you uh, can uh, generate antibody against this, so the antibody will be will have a geometry which will definitely look like something like this and then in order to have the complementarity uh, against the antigen. Okay. So, basically what you what I said that if some molecule enters into the body then what we see there is an immune response and some proteins which are antibodies uh, also called immunoglobulins. These antibodies are generated which have complementary structure to the antigen. Okay. Now, suppose this antigen I, I make an antigen which is which looks like the transition state of a reaction. So, my antigen is basically the transition state, but remember again I said the transition states are very unstable transitory in nature. So, better this is approximated to the intermediate structure, because intermediate lies in the energy minima. See if you go to the physical chemistry side now. So, what are isolable here is this one this one and that one this is the intermediate that means intermediate has stability. So, you can make something which looks like the intermediate. Hmm. So, now suppose you have the intermediate in hand. So, what I should do I should inject the intermediate into say mice suppose I will not inject into a human body that will not be allowed ethically not correct. So, you inject into the mice and then what will happen? I, ex I will expect that there will be immune response in the mice and if there is immune response then antibodies will be generated and these antibodies if antibodies are generated then these antibodies are what? These antibodies will recognize this intermediate. 
because this is your antigen now, this is your antigen. So, that will be recognized by the antibodies and then that will bind to this intermediate. Then there are complex bio biological processes, immunological processes which ultimately destroys the antigen. Okay. So, now you come back again, I want to have a catalyst to do the reaction to catalyze the reaction A to B. I know the mechanism of this reaction. This mechanism uh, has a intermediate produced in between the uh, substrate and the product. I know the structure of the intermediate. So, if I take the intermediate, intermediate have some stability that is ok. If I take the intermediate and inject into mice, then what should happen? What I will expect? I will expect the because it is a foreign particle. So, antibodies will be generated and if antibodies if I isolate these antibodies, these antibodies are the ones which recognize which will recognize the antigen. In this case the antigen is the intermediate. Okay. So, then these antibodies will be my catalyst. So, if I add these antibodies to this uh, A, so now the transition state uh, from A to B because the intermediate is stabilized the transition state looks very similar to the intermediate according to Hammond postulate. So, the antibodies will now stabilize the transition state. If the transition state is stabilized that means, activation energy will go down and that means, now the transition state will be easily converted into the product B. So, that is the whole idea of this, this topic of synthetic biology. Synthetic biology have other domains we are just concentrating on how to make artificial enzymes okay, or enzyme like systems. It is through it is through our immunological response. The whole basis is that you have to use the, uh, the immuno response that is available in a living system like uh, mice or human because our immune system protects us from the infection. Uh, or invading agents from the outside. Okay. Now, there are certain problems. So, we will have to now discuss the we will discuss what are antibodies, how they look like and then we will also talk about does any foreign molecule generate antibodies in our system or not. Okay. So, these are very important because some some antigens or some molecules if I inject into the body may not may or may not generate antibodies. The classic example is that when we become sick what we do we take a medicine. What are medicines? These are small molecules you will never find a medicine uh, the molecular weight is very large that is not possible. So, what you do you take only small molecules eh? and if I take the small molecules what happens I if there is immunity developed against that small molecule then the drug will not work drug is a small molecule then the drug will not work. Okay. So, that means antibodies are not generated against small molecules. So, that is a stumbling block here that although the theory looks very good that I should take the inhibitor, inject it into the mice, isolate the antibodies that should uh, catalyze the reaction, but antibodies are not generated against small molecules. When you talk about these reactions, these reactions are very uh, uh, basically uh, reactions between small molecules not involving any large molecules. So, the, so, that we have to talk that means, small molecules are not immunogenic. What is immunogenicity? That if uh, some molecules fail to develop immune response, then that is not immunogenic. And if the invading organism, a invading molecule um, generates immune response inside the body, a biological term is illicits. If an ends, if a small molecule illicits enzymes, that means it generates a, generates antibodies then that those molecules are called and uh, antigens. Okay. So, what the small molecules does 
in the body the small molecule sometimes gives response which are called allergic response. Some molecules see like many of the small molecules when it goes into the body uh, we start sneezing or some skin rashes has come up these are allergic reactions like some penicillins some people are allergic to penicillins, but nobody is will be nobody will be uh, will develop any immune response against the small molecules. So, small molecules are not immunogenic. So, forget about isolating antibodies by injecting small molecules. So, you have to do some other strategy. Okay. I think antibodies we have already told you that antibodies are basically generated against invading it could be organisms, it could be virus, it could be large molecules antibodies are generated. Okay. And this is the process is called the immune response. Okay. Now, there are some biological things here that uh, there are two types of immunity. One is called cellular immunity which guards against the virally infected cells or fungi, parasites and foreign tissues. So, when these this is called cellular. So, some immunity are through cellular processes our cells that are present uh, inside the body uh, specially that is what is called the T cells or specifically they are called T lymphocyte cells. These T cells uh, T cells because it is T stands for because they are generated in the thymus and these T cells through a cellular immunology processes they guard against the virally infected cells that means, the cells where some virus has entered or some fungi or parasites or tissue. Okay. So, there is no uh, that is one type the other type is humoral immunity humoral means humor means fluid the body fluid is called humor. Okay. It's, uh, in this humoral antibody uh, uh, the humoral immunity is basically this is the most effective against bacterial infections and cellular phases of viral infections. But basically what you know that there are two types one is cellular immunity and the other is humoral immunity. When there is humoral immunity that actually is uh, mediated by antibodies or what I call that they are also called immunoglobulins. Okay. So, we are interested in the second type of immunity the humoral immunity. Okay. Antibodies are produced. So, who produces the antibodies? It is produced by B cells or typically called B lymphocytes. Okay. B cells which, uh, which are actually matured in the bone marrow which are present in the bone marrow. These B cells are the ones which generates the antibodies okay because somebody has to it is the cell which makes the proteins the enzymes all these are uh, all proteins are made by the cells okay i also already told that what is immune response it is triggered by foreign molecules and this is called antigen foreign molecule is often a protein it could be a big protein or it could be a carbohydrate which are that means large macromolecules are they can only uh, act as an antigen small molecules cannot. Okay. Small molecules can evade our immunological machinery because they are very small they are not noticed. Okay. So, the question big question is what to do how to generate antibodies uh, against the small molecule. So, that is a big challenge number two is that there is uh, there is another problem that is called if you have some big molecules entering into the body suppose this is the shape of the big molecule entering into the body. So, now by some process uh, signal will go to the B cells that something has come and this is the shape of this shape and structure of what is the big molecule. Okay. Then this B cell starts producing uh, these immunoglobins or antibodies. So, when they make the antibodies these antibodies are 
some antibodies what they will do they can bind at this position. There will be some antibodies all are against this antigen remember this is the antigen this is a big molecule, but there are different types of antibodies some are going at different. So, these are going at different sites at different sites they are going and binding. So, they are attacking the same molecule, but targeting different sites. So, that means, what you have you have a collection of antibodies different types of antibodies. Suppose, I have different balls. So, a red balls 5 red balls 4 blue balls all these uh, say 7 green balls all these balls are like football suppose you can play football with any one of these, but what we say that you have a collection of polyclonal balls means you have a collection of poly different types of balls, but everything is targeted towards playing football. Similarly, here these antibodies they are also targeting the same molecule same antigen molecule, but at different sites. So, what is basically if you isolate the if you take the blood and try to isolate the antibodies against a particular antigen you will see that it has got a variety of antibodies variety they are common their commonality is that all of them are attacking the same antigen, okay. but at different sites and also their efficiency of binding will also be different. So, this is what are called polyclonal antibodies. Polyclonal antibodies are antibodies that are secreted by different B cells, B cell lineages within the body. Okay. So, we have different types of B cells, one B cell will generate antibodies which go to a particular site. Some B cells will make another sets of antibodies which goes to other sites of the antigen. So, different types of B cells they will make a set of polyclonal antibodies. Okay. So, now what you do the strategy is like this that we want to make antibodies against the inhibitor, but we know that the inhibitor does not generate any antibodies because it is a small molecule uh, intermediate it is a intermediate not inhibitor this intermediate is a small molecule you cannot generate antibodies. To, so, to generate antibodies what you do you attach it the intermediate structure whatever it is into a large molecule. Okay. So, you make a something like this. So, you conjugate the intermediate into a large molecule. If you do that now as I said always now this is only one system and antibodies will be generated at different generated which recognizes different sites. Suppose that okay, some antibodies may be there which generates this site, some antibodies will be there which generates this site, but suppose there is some antibodies which uh, recog which generates and which is which recognized the intermediate that which is part of the whole system. Okay. Then, these are the antibodies you can separate and that will now stabilize the intermediate that means, in turn that will stabilize the transition state. So, the theory is again not very complicated if you want to generate the antibodies against small molecule. So, what you do the small molecule has to be attached to a big partner a, mac a macro molecule like a protein another protein you attach that and then this whole thing you can inject and you get a set of polyclonal antibodies and if you are lucky that some antibodies are there which recognizes the, the intermediate structure of this whole ensemble. Then if you can isolate those antibodies they are going to catalyze your reaction because they only recognize binds to the intermediate part and finally, that will be the, the catalyst. Okay. So, this is the situation. Now, the challenge is whatever okay, some definitions uh, you should also know see what are monoclonal antibodies I have already told they are antibodies that are made by the same type of B cells. 
same type of B cells making only one type of antibody and that is the these are called monoclonal antibodies. That means, how have if I have those red balls, blue balls and green balls, if I separate only the red balls from here, then these red balls are all identical. So, that is a poly, that is a monoclonal set. Similarly, I have different sets of antibodies, some goes and binds here, some goes binds here, some here, some in the intermediate. Okay. So, this polyclonal antibody uh, set, I have to have some mechanism to separate it into monoclonal antibody, which recognizes only one uh, one site of this whole thing. Okay. And these monoclonal antibodies come from only a particular type of B cells, other type of B cells will generate other type of antibodies. Okay. So, now just to summarize that in order to create an artificial enzyme, then what you do? You draw the mechanism of the reaction, draw the intermediate and if you have a similar structure like intermediate or if the intermediate is quite stable, then you attach it to a large molecule, which is by the way called the carrier molecule, because that is carrying the intermediate along with it. And then you develop polyclonal antibodies against this whole system and then your task is basically separate this polyclonal into monoclonal antibodies and so that this monoclonal set recognizes the inhibitor uh, this uh, intermediate. Okay. So, this separation is what is required and uh, this attachment is required conjugation bio conjugation it is called and now what is the name of this there are certain I think the next page will have that. This um, I already told single clone of B cells will produce only uh, only one type, only one site, okay? Only one site. Now these sites that suppose see why antibodies are not generated against small molecules, but it is generated against large molecules because large molecules have characteristic surface. So, they have different geometries at the substrates, which can be noticeable. Okay. But if you have a small molecule, you can consider to a biological system, they are considered as tiny dots. So, if there are tiny dots, there is no characteristic feature of the surface of the large molecule. If that is not present, then for antibodies to bind, that will be difficult. So, you should have you should have some characteristic features in the surface like this is a bent one. Uh, so, now you can have a complementary structure for that, you can have a complementary structure for this site also. Okay. That is why large molecules are recognized and not the small molecules, because small molecules are look basically tiny dots, they do not have any structure structural pattern. Now, these sites where antibodies binds these are called epitope. Epitope are the, are the sites, because not all portion antibodies will bind. There are specific sites in the antigen where antibody binds. So, these specific sites are called epitopes and uh, the small molecule, which is attached to the large carrier molecule and you are developing antibodies against the small molecule. Okay and those small molecule will be called is called hapten. Hapten are basically small molecules which mimics the intermediate and when it attaches to the carrier molecule it develops antibodies which recognizes the small molecule. This small molecule is called in biology it is called hapten. Okay. Now, I think every time hap I think it is there, hapten, where is hapten? The definition was there somewhere, yes. Haptens are small molecules that elicit immune response only when attached to a large carrier such as a protein. The carrier may be the one that also does, does that actually uh, creates, that itself can create immune response and it can create immune response even when attached the, with the small molecule. Okay. 
So, that is hapten, it is clear what is hapten and then epitope I already told, but there is a another name for epitope that is called antigenic determinant is the part of the antigen that is recognized by the immune systems specifically by the antibodies the B cells or the T cells. And this epitope is the specific part actually it is written piece that is also okay of the antigen to which antibody binds. I think for us that is okay. Now, the things are little bit easier means uh, as we proceeded. So, basically what you have? You have to have a, uh, a intermediate attached to a carrier molecule and then isolate the monoclonal antibody from the polyclonal system and this monoclonal antibody should recognize should have a binding affinity to the intermediate. Then that will become a catalyst okay? because catalyst lowers the uh, uh, stabilizes the transition state and transition state mimics the intermediate. Now, Interestingly, when Linus Pauling, who had uh, received two Nobel Prizes, the first one was basically the structure of proteins, the alpha helical structure of proteins and he uh, did the structure of insulin. So, at that time he studied many enzyme reactions, protein, how they catalyze and he predicted at that time, he had a very famous book called Nature of Chemical Bond. This Pauling was the same Pauling who gave the hybridization theory. So, at that time he said that enzymes stabilize the transition state and one day may come that people can develop enzyme like systems which recognize the transition state and then it will catalyze reactions. So, that will uh, open up new avenues for organic synthesis. Okay. I think thank you.